We're entering the Michael Jackson yeah, hole. Yeah, let's officially you, enter. Let me go enter enter the jack hole. Oh, yeah, the jack hole. <laughs> so for those of you that cannot handle it, who are in protest, who will be triggered or um, otherwise offended by this, I hope that you keep watching, actually, because I do enjoy a good amount of viewership on my <laughs> episodes. So I encourage you to keep watching. Um, but listen also closely, because I think that I have um, some compelling arguments to make to you. And I'm not, Let's, and again, if you're, if you're someone that thinks that the documentary is BS and anyone who believes that Michael Jackson did these crimes is like a looney tune, like, um, <clears throat> listen to me. And I, I don't blame you for thinking that way because, and the documentary explores this concept so good because the documentary is about, is the best I've seen about the, su and not about Michael Jackson, not about the survivors, but about abuse and how it happens. Mm -hmm. About the grooming product, or process. the grooming process. And what was so magnificent about Michael Jackson, as we've said, there's never been a pop star like him, ever. He was like the Beatles, squeezed all into one person. Combined so with being a victim. <laughs> and just loved by the whole world right. like seriously everywhere so he in a sense had this had or, or one of the victims said we were already groomed when we met him right because he is this god on this planet earth and he in a in a way he has groomed the world and i'm going to talk about that and if you think i'm crazy and you think i'm bullshit that's fine you can hate me just l at least listen Let's okay, just here we first go. introduce Let's the... Yeah. Oh. Let's Jamone. introduce what we're talking about. Yeah. The HBO documentary that yeah. came out, Leaving Neverland. Leaving Neverland. If you're wondering where to watch it, it's on HBO. It's on HBO. Which I think is a little bit unfortunate because not everyone has HBO. I think a lot more people would watch it. Hey, you Eli, was. you had the hookup, though. If you got Amazon... Prime, you can get a free week trial. That's how oh, I yeah. watch yeah. And it's immediate. You just yes. pop it yeah, on. It's yeah. so nice. You know, it's funny. Everybody watched Game of Thrones, but somehow <laughs> well, when it comes to something, anything else, nobody has HBO. I think they watch it legally. I know. It's there. hilarious. Okay. I just wanted to give the details mm -hmm. for anyone who's not caught up. You're done. Oh, I'm done. You're passing the... It's, it's a two-parter. Yeah. And then there's a third part following up. It's an interview that Oprah Winfrey interviews the two victims and the director of the documentary. Yes. I, I thought all three were so good. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> there's another documentary that was that I watched on Netflix called Abducted in Plain Sight. Yes. And, and, you know, I had watched that recently, and it's about a man who befriended a family and gradually built up this relationship with this young girl he had fallen in love with. But he had groomed the family, he had groomed the child to the point over a long period of time that he was able to just take the girl and run off. Like, there was no checks and balances. And the way that it happened was so similar. It was so, and it was so similar to what I heard in this documentary. And again, that's what I thought was so important and compelling. It's about, as a whole, child abuse and about the grooming process. So... <clears throat> You know, I feel like I was in crazy world seeing all this, like, when I first saw this documentary, I was so outraged. I mean, I was like, my goodness, this is absolutely insane. And I yeah. go online to read the conversation about it. And it's not only do I see, first of all, not a lot of people talking about it, but those that are talking about it are brutally, um, brutally, brutally, viciously attacking anyone who's speaking in support of the documentary and just decrying the uh, the two dudes, the two victims, the host, mm -hmm. Oprah, anyone. Just absolutely decrying them. And I thought, like, man, I'm in crazy world. But I quickly realized that all the people who were doing that haven't watched the documentary. It's so plainly obvious because a lot of their talking points are things that are addressed mm -hmm. widely in the documentary. Um, but I, I was just surprised by that he had so much sway and pull yeah. and people cared so deeply about him still to this day. So it is a testament first. It, it almost is a testament to the fact that the world has been groomed. Because now, yes. even 10 years after his death and long after he had an active career, I think, goes to show that even now the, he has this army of people that can see no wrong in him going to war, war with these people. So it kind of proves the point that he has this, like, mystical uh, attraction, this mystical pull. Um, 
Now, I was always on the fence about Michael Jackson. Me too. I, you know, I really didn't want to believe it. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, and, Michael and, Jackson? And I'm a huge fan of his music, as I'm sure most yeah. of us are. I mean, the guy is a phenomenal talent. I mean, the guy's like, he's a, he's a one Greatest in a... Greatest ever. I mean, the one, yeah. A one in a thousand year talent. We would put out videos of him dancing and just like stare at it and like, this is perfection. I mean, like, he had it all. He was an incredible singer. He was an incredible dancer. The guy invented, like, pop dance, for Christ's sake. I mean, he really did. He's an incredible <laughs> songwriter. The guy was phenomenal. And I was always on the fence. But, you know, I have a thought experiment that I would always pose to myself that always, uh, you know, edged me towards he did it. And that thought experiment is very simple. Imagine a man, any man, sleeping in bed with a young child, a young boy, every night for 30 days straight, with no parent. What are the chances, I ask you, what are the percent chances that he didn't touch that little boy in an appropriate way? And I would think hard on that, and I would say, you know, I have to say, in all honesty, using my brain and my common sense, forgetting about all the mysticism and everything, it's zero. Mm -hmm. It's zero percent. That is just not something that you do. Okay, so again, this is just the beginning of the rabbit hole. I've got a lot of things to share. Um, so that was a thought experiment that always kind of pushed me towards, you know what, I think he probably did do it. And that was an idea that <laughs> came from him. Like, it's not like the kid said, oh, I want to sleep with you. He would tell the kid, yeah. you should come sleep with me. Mm -hmm. and he put that idea out well, there. Well, here, actually, since we're, I'm going to skip ahead because I have a really compelling video that support, that literally, um, shh shows Michael saying that and here what I what I like to talk about here is undeniable un undisputed facts okay I'm not going to talk about conjecture I'm not going to make no, assumptions no, no, no. I'm not going to say stuff that hasn't been proven I'm just going to show you an undisputed fact here's a video of Michael with one of the his his childhood friends okay sleep on the bed sleep on the bed we're like no 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 you know you sleep on you sleep on the bed and then he finally said okay if you love me you sleep on the bed I was like, oh, man. So here you can hear the kid saying, I didn't want to sleep on the bed. Oh, man. Michael Jackson here is shown manipulating this kid and saying, pressuring if him. you love me, exactly pressuring him, if you love me, the God that you look up to, you'll sleep in my bed. And this is the beginning of the grooming process. That's like... So step one, you get him to sleep in his bed, mm -hmm. and then the next night, it's obvious he's gonna sleep oh, in your I'm bed. Yeah, exactly. And then they both sleep in the bed for thirty and nights straight without like... parents. Now here, uh, if you skip to the end, it is there's a fascinating another detail. I'll sleep on the bed. But haven't you got a spare room or a spare house here where he could have stayed? Yeah, but no. Yes, I, we have guest units, but whenever kids come here, they always want to stay with me. Really? <laughs> they never want to stay in the guest. Because literally, that was disputed in the first second of this clip. <laughs> like five seconds ago. <laughs> so Michael is saying, oh, well, the, I, the kids sleep with me because they always want to. So what happens, he puts this thought in the kid, and then the kid goes to his mom and like, Mom, can I sleep with Michael? <laughs> right. So it seems like the kid wanted it, but it, it starts from... And one of the hallmarks of child abuse is convincing the kid that they want it and that they like it. That's why victims of child abuse carry so much guilt and remorse, because they're so conflicted and shame. And, and shame because, because in their they minds, wanted it they're too. so conflicted, because when they think back, they remember enjoying it. They remember wanting it. They remember that it was fun and exciting. And so it's hard to reconcile as a grown person those feelings that you know you had when you were a kid because those feelings last, right? And when you think back as yourself as a little five-year-old, you as a 20-year-old, you sometimes would put it in your 20-year-old brain in that five-year-old kid. And it's hard to make sense of how you felt then. So this is what Michael's doing to this kid. He's going... He, on one hand, the kid kind of ratted him out and said, mm -hmm. Michael said, if you love me, you'll stay in my bed. And then a mere two minutes later, Michael's saying, oh, well, kids only sleep in my bed and I don't they offer them the guest room to. because they want to. Mm -hmm. Again. So. And I have never invited them in my room. Really? They always just want to stay. What they about say, if you love me, you'll sleep in my bed? Can I stay with you tonight? I go, if it's okay with your parents, yes, you can. Did, did, did you, were your parents happy? 
that you were here with with So Michael. that's a I mean guys that's a yeah. lie. That's kind of a lie, right? We can all I think agree on that. Oh, based on this. oh very 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 happy. And I know they're happy cuz I was happy. Did they come with you? Yeah, most of the time but I wasn't really with my parents. I was mainly with Michael. Most of the time. But they were happy that you were here. Yeah. No. Now what? They were here. happy. They got to hang out at the Neverland parents Ranch, and get too. wined and dined. Yeah. Wait, there was I something I want to show you guys. One more, one more thing here from this clip. Um, let me find it. Yeah, watch this. This part here, very unsettling. People hear that <coughs> children from other families have come and they've stayed in your house. Look at them holding hands. They've stayed in your bedroom. Okay. Done well, very few. And look how his head you know, is on his shoulder. Have, I mean, what the? F- and they that's say, not. That's not how you act with a friend. Mm-hmm. Let's say Michael is has the mentality of a little boy, and he never had a childhood, and he, so that, that's why he likes hanging out with friends. What the? How do you explain this? Even as a young boy, mm-hmm. I would never do that with a grown with man an, or a friend, or with another young boy. I wouldn't do that with anyone. It's just like as a young kid, I would be horrified to do that with anyone. Yeah, even my whatever anyone, a girl, a friend, a boy, my mom, my dad, my brother. I wouldn't do that with anybody. Right. But here he is doing it in plain sight. Um, and that's well, what I mean by Michael Jackson groomed the world. Because he convinced everybody that he was just a young boy himself. And yeah, that's why cool. he loved. And he was blameless. And he's holding hands with kids. Yeah. They're c- cuddling with him on camera. And he would always say on camera, like, I just love kids. <laughs> you know, all this. Everything you know about him is things that he would put out there, basically. Yeah. That is, he's been a victim himself, and he loves kids, and kids are like, he sees God in kids. You would say all this stuff that I see God's in. I kids. just want to help kids. Think about that. And so you, your whole life, you're you're <clears throat> absorbing this without even realizing. Right. So when someone comes and tells you the opposite about him, you already have like sorry. Yeah. There's or, no way. Or, or as a parent, when you bring your kids over to come hang out with them, and Michael's like, well, um. We're going to just sleep in my bedroom tonight. Okay. They're having a sleepover. And then it's important to mention, and what they show in the documentary, <laughs> when the parents come with the kid, he shows the parents a good time, too. Oh, he groomed and them. And it's like... It's a big a, time part. It's like a dream for the parent, too. Mm-hmm. You're meeting Michael Jackson, and mm-hmm. he loves you, and he talks to you, and he calls you, and gives you gifts. Right. And he bought like, one of them a house. He bought a one car, of them a car. He a sent them on vacations. Bracelet. He just pay, he just straight up paid them. And one of the things that is in, undisputable about this documentary, if you watch it, is how he groomed not only the kids but the parents. He yeah. one of these main kids, Wade <laughs> Robinson. Wade. Now Wade is super interesting because he was with Michael Jackson, and I say with because they were in a relationship um, for seven years. Now he would call and talk to the mom every day. And this is corroborated because he sent faxes to the family, he sent video messages to the family, he sent drawings, he sent letters, he did left messages. They have all of this evidence of him talking, best friends, connecting so powerfully with the mom. He would call and talk to the mom, he would call and talk to the kid. And Wade is the guy that people keep um, bringing up as so uncredible (laughs) because he testified with, like... He testified that nothing happened with Michael twice, mm-hmm. but his story was so crazy, and they explain it so detailed mm-hmm. in the documentary. Like Wade was one of these star kids that it was so good at imitating the Michael Jackson dance moves, mm-hmm. and he was a super fan of Michael. He was actually somewhat famous as a kid because his dancing was so phenomenal and so michael jackson like that's how he got to meet him yeah he won a contest contest and with adults and he he just crushed it they met him when he was seven Mm -hmm. and the abuse started when he was seven yeah and uh, and so these guys the both of these guys in the video they both had sons and they both started having mental breakdowns when they when their sons started to reach the age that they were when the abuse started and because they were able to actually see what they were like at that age because that when they saw their beautiful innocent pure son at seven who they know full well is incapable of entering a romantic relationship of any kind or having sexual relations mm-hmm. with somebody you know what i mean and you could see how easily manipulated and malleable they are so i yeah. think well what they both say is they both had sons around their age or like about to reach that age you yeah. know a few years before maybe but 
And so they could finally connect with that younger s- themselves and understand where they were mentally. And that's when they started to understand that they were truly abused. Mm-hmm. And a lot of, and both of them were having like um, extraordinary mental issues, yeah. with depression and anxiety and self loathing that they didn't understand. And so, and, and they never told anyone about their abuse because Michael, according to their account, <clears throat> <clears throat> from the very beginning, first of all, they had this intense, passionate love. And Michael would always say to them, repeat to them, if we, if you ever tell anyone about this or we ever get caught, I'm going to go to jail for life. I'm going to be over. My whole career is going to be over and you're going to go to jail for life. Mm-hmm. And so they're like, he was like, this is our secret. This is our love. We love each other. And if anyone ever finds out, I will be, I will go to jail and you will go to jail. And he kept repeating that to them throughout the whole duration of the relationship. And that's, you're hearing this when you're seven. And, like, and, which is so important, the most famous magical person mm -hmm. that's lived in recent history. So for them, they were both fully convinced until they had like sons and started having mental breakdowns that they were going to take this to the grave. Yes. Also, they didn't really know for a long time that what happened was wrong. Right. Which is like because kids part don't, of you part know, of the problem with child abuse. <laughs> something I've learned from therapy is that we all take things for granted that are we take normal things for granted that we think are normal until you meet other people or talk to other people and until you can compare your your experience to them. Mm-hmm. You don't then you can all of a sudden realize Oh, that was not normal at all. Right. Yeah. And so that's very much what happened with these guys. They had an experience that was so unusual, that was so powerful, that was so transformative by someone who was so powerful and so magical. They didn't have the context. They didn't have the comparison to they didn't have the tools. And I mean, my God, it's unimaginable. And you've seen, by the way, the vitriol and the hate that accusers of Michael Jackson received. And the disbelief that they always get. So all of these things combined. And also, they never stopped loving Michael Jackson. That's what Mm -hmm. you learn in the documentary, too. They still love him. Right? Because There's just still so many emotions for them. They still, like... Right. They don't know how to break it down still. And one of the compelling things for me, too, was like... So as they aged, they kind of grew out of favor with him. And mm-hmm. in, in favor of other young boys. And they would see him with other young boys kind of with the same body language. And they felt like rejected, like they were no longer the favorite. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, they were in love. They were literally in love. Right? <clears throat> and so they felt rejected. And slowly over time, as they aged, they grew apart from him. They would see him occasionally and talk to him occasionally. And they were still friendly. But they grew apart. And, I, and a lot of them, they said that they were going to trial to testify on Michael's behalf and all the parents and the whole family did it because they were they were Michael's soldiers. Mm-hmm. They were going to war for Michael. They were winning his favor back. They thought, you know, I just want Michael to love me again and I'll mm-hmm. do anything to please him, to defend yeah. him. They were his warriors um, in this battle. And so even though on one hand they knew that that had happened to them, that was a secret love that they shared and they loved Michael dearly and they wanted that love back. And so they went to war with him. Again, this is all corroborated. It's very compelling. It's very, it's just, it's a fascinating look at child abuse and mm-hmm. grooming. And it's so, so, so compelling. Um, <clears throat> I have other things I want to talk about here. Now, that's a little bit of an overview of the documentary. Um, now, here's something interesting that happened yesterday. Corey Feldman, who was one of Michael Jackson's uh, staunch worth, staunch worthy supporters, who himself was just, a vi- just staunch, staunch. Thank you, Dan. God damn it! Um, he, because he himself was a victim of child abuse, and so a lot of his fans and supporters have been looking to Corey. Feldman as evidence that Michael Jackson did nothing. Well, yesterday night, 
after Corey watched the documentary, surprise, surprise, Corey Feldman came out and did an interview and said he can no longer defend Michael Jackson after horrendous abuse allegations. Corey Feldman is dramatically pulling back his support for embattled friend Michael Jackson in light of the horrendous child sexual abuse allegations. He said after watching and processing Leaving Neverland, he, uh, he said he could no longer support him. So, again, people keep making a kind of a meme out of like, oh, you watched a documentary, you think you know everything. Okay, so let's go down the line. <clears throat> Corey Feldman, best friend, Michael Jackson, victim of abuse. He watched the documentary. He found something compelling in it. Um, also, the fact that <clears throat> that didn't happen with Corey Feldman doesn't mean that Michael didn't abuse. Right. That right, that's case. the big one. Him and him and Macaulay Culkin yeah. have both always said nothing happened between them, which, fair enough. You know, he probably so, didn't do it to everybody. So, again, Michael Jackson was a very cunning predator. And as many child predators are, they are very selective about who they choose. Michael Jackson, as shown throughout the documentary, was very particular. He found weak families. He yep. found families with weak bonds who are easily manipulated, parents who wanted the limelight, who wanted the money, who wanted to be associated with someone like Michael Jackson. And he would prey on these families and use them against each other. I mean, I mean, it's not every mom who will leave their child with Michael Jackson alone for 30 days. I mean, that guy, Wade Robson, he was in Australia. <coughs> and Michael would call them to their house every day. And he would talk to the mom, too, for a long time. Mm -hmm. And eventually, he got her to move here with yeah. Wade and yeah. the sister. And basically, this whole pa family broke up over this destroyed. whole thing. Absolutely destroyed the family. The dad was left back. They all abandoned him, and he later committed suicide, which was, yeah. the, I mean, the story of the dad was absolutely Jesus. tragic. The guy was totally blameless, I mean. And they left a brother there in Australia, too. <laughs> yeah. It's and so, actually, now, later on, you see that this family is so fractured. Mm -hmm. Today, the, the, the child says that he has no feelings for his mom, that he can't forgive her what she, for what she did. He's trying, but... And you see the pain in this family is 100% real. And you see it is broken. The, the dad is dead. You see the whole family in the documentary. They all give their perspective. Oh, yeah. Michael called us every night for two hours. Michael was sending us faxes every day. Here's the fax. I mean, the siblings knew that he was calling. They would talk to him, too. So yeah. it's all there. It's he had a little like... sister who would go there to Neverland, mm -hmm. who moved to uh, California yeah. with them. Guess who he didn't have sleeping in his room every night? The little girl. Never little girl. The whole family knew that it was about Wade, mm -hmm. just the boy, mm -hmm. which was interesting. Yes, he was obsessed with Wade. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> so, again, just because a popular misconception is just because someone wasn't abused doesn't mean that others weren't. He was very particular and he was very smart about who he did it with. He did it with people he could get away with and families he could manipulate and groom. And moms and parents who were like, who could put themselves in a state of denial in Who exchange for the benefit struck. of all the great things. He bought them a house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, this, by the way, I have to watch this several times a day just to take take myself out of crazy world. <laughs> um, this is the best thing I've ever seen. This guy, Kyle Dunnigan, Horrible. follow him HBO on Instagram and Twitter. Daddy. He's the funniest mother effer in the whole freaking world. <laughs> and I just, I'm so thankful this video exists because uh, when I feel I'm I just put this on, and I'm like, oh, thank God, there's people out there that are still sane. I'd like to address this horrible God. HBO documentary about me. <laughs> it's filled with lies and ignorance. I would never hurt children. I love sleeping with little boys, that's all. Just a grown man <laughs> sleeping with a little boy. Of course I fuck them kids. Come on. It's so obvious. <laughs> I was a good pedophile, too, huh? I built a whole amusement park and a candy store, and I say, your kids like candy? And they'd be like, yeah, yeah, we like it. I'm like, yeah, you like it, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, tell your mom to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> then they did. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Didn't y'all notice I only slept with little cute boys? Not little girls. That is so Not little ugly true. boys. Just cute little motherfucking tight-ass mm, mm boys. <laughs> well... Better get back to heaven. I got in because I apologized right before I died. Damn the rules. <laughs> Bye. So if you guys ever feel like you're in crazy world, put this video on. Kyle Dunnigan is just a genius. 
But again, he actually makes some really fantastic points. Guys, <laughs> he never slept with all of the boys he befriended were like really handsome models. One was a TV commercial, yeah. one was a dance. Like these were really handsome, beautiful young boys, yeah. right? Not fat boys, not ugly boys, not little girls. It's very freaking true. Why? Mm -hmm. Explain that. Yeah, he had a type. If he, why, why, why did he have a type? Exactly. I love how he goes, of course I fucked them kids. It's so obvious. <laughs> it is. It's so obvious, I feel like. Uh, like it is. What did the little, what did it, uh, Michael Jackson say to little kids in the middle of the night in his bedroom? Come on, me! Ow! Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hey! God. Um, the crazy thing is, too, I just got to say, it's like, it, it, even if you accept nothing happened, which obviously is far-fetched, but nothing sexual happened, the <laughs> things that are overt, the things we know about, those are abuse. Like, you know, having a, a seven-year-old sleep in your bed with them. 30 mm -hmm. days in a row. Right, that's going to the, twist them up. Like, that, even if nothing sexual happened, that's... Still abusing that kid. Yeah. So irresponsible. Yeah. yeah. Not the kid's not in school. He's not right. doing anything. He's just spending time with Michael Jackson. Yeah. It's who lives bizarre. Who 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 they just play video games all day. That's cool. <laughs> I mean, if you really cared about a kid, you would be like, dude, go to school and come hang out with me on the weekends. No, he Michael wanted the kid to immediately move in for a year. Right. He asked the mom. To live the kid with him That's for a year. That's an undisputed fact, by the way. Now, what I want to go into right now are undisputed facts about Michael Jackson. These are facts that whether you support Michael Jackson or not, these are facts that we all can agree are undisputed. So here's number one. These are all facts, okay? This is not conjecture. This is facts. The hallway leading to Jackson's bedroom was a serious security zone covered by video and wired for sound so that the steps of anyone approaching would make ding-dong sounds. Mm -hmm. Now, this was well documented by the police, <laughs> and it was covered a lot extensively in the documentary as well, is that he had, like, several doors leading into his bedroom. They were all wired for sounds, had video cameras, had bells. Um, so, okay. So now we so now we have a place in time. We have Michael Jackson sleeping in bed with a young boy in his bed for 30 days straight. And now let's add this element of that there's three doorways between and it's a serious security zone with video and wired for sound so that anyone approaching makes a ding dong. So let's add that to the mix. Are you still? I mean, do a thought experiment with yourself. Anybody else? Chat. You know? I mean, I'm serious. So let's continue with undisputed facts. So far, five boys Michael Jackson has shared a bed with have accused him of abuse. Jordy Chandler, Jason Fran Francia, Gavin Arvizio, Wade Robinson, and Jimmy Safechuck. That's five separate abuse allegations. Um, Jackson paid $25 million to settle the Chandler lawsuit with $18 million going to Jordy, $2.5 million going to each of the parents, and the rest to the lawyers. Jackson said he paid that sum to avoid something long and drawn out. Francia also received $2.4 million from Jackson. Now, a lot of the um, defenders of Michael Jackson point to this as proof that these people are just... Um, after money. After money. And so that supports the fact that that they're liars. But, you By know... By the way, that's what R. Kelly says, too, right? <coughs> well, People just want money. It's su such an easy way it's, to dismiss it. Yeah, it's the easiest way to say. <coughs> but what remedy... First of Okay. First of all, this is such a genius play by Michael's lawyers and for the whole propaganda machine. Because, first of all, Michael Jackson could never risk being found guilty. Mm-hmm. I mean, any amount. If there, if there's a po if there's a possibility he could be found guilty, there's just no, there's no chance. So paying them off, first of all, removes that risk, and it gives them the ability to just characterize anybody as only in for for the money. So in one fell, one fell swoop, they are able to discredit the the plaintiffs as money hungry, and two, protecting his reputation by saying. 
oh, well, we were never found guilty. We settled out of court because we just wanted them to go away. Right. But you don't really pay $25 million when you're not guilty. I wouldn't. I mean, I'm not Michael Jackson, though. But, I mean, I guess it, it makes sense. I could see that. If he's like, you know what? And he, w- I read that he was on tour at the time, and his tours are worth, like, hundreds of millions of dollars. So they were, you know, it's like he just w- he didn't want to deal with it. He didn't want to jeopardize his tour. Mm-hmm. Make it go away. <laughs> and this, you're talking about the 93 case, right? Yes. The, the original lawsuit? The first one. I but the one that, he, that, that was settled for $25 right. million. You know, there's an interesting detail about it. Do you know who his lawyer was in that case? No. Cochran, right? Johnny Cochran. Yeah, who's that? the guy who represented the other uh, man who was acquitted of crimes. Wow. It, do we all agree that O.J. Simpson is guilty? I love how everyone points to the justice system as the end all be all. That, yeah. O.J. That Simpson really... was acquitted. Well, and it's we a fundamental think... misunderstanding. When when you're acquitted, it doesn't mean you're innocent. That's why they call it not guilty. They can't prove beyond a reasonable doubt to the jury that this person right. is guilty. But it does. Not being convicted doesn't mean it didn't happen. They're not magical. They don't know. They just can't fully prove it in court of law. <coughs> and also, abuse is one of the hardest things to prove because... Child been, abuse, specifically. He, he said, she said, yeah. Right, because at the end of the day, it's Michael and a child in a room Alone. by themselves. Unless you have pictures or videos or something extraordinary, how, how would you there's really it? no way to prove that it happened. First of all, there were no... It's not like today when every kid has a cell phone, smartphone, Yeah. today... But even not even today, I don't know that every seven year old could access uh, evidence if something happened it's, to him. You it's know? extraordinarily difficult so, to to prove. So, yeah, exactly. The fact that the documentary is one sided, it's like, yeah, that's kind of like the only option. Well, I mean, that argument do- for me doesn't make any sense because. And also, what would it help if what they they ask uh, Michael's family what yeah. they think? We already know what they yeah, think. Yeah, he's not guilty. But but ultimately, again, they were not in the bedroom. We all no. agree that he slept in the bed with them, right? So right, who was that. who was in that room? The kid. If He's anyone, the only one. Michael Jackson's passed away. If anyone was closest to them was the parents, yeah. like sleeping next door, in a room next. They're in to the them. movie, and the parents are in the movie. Uh, and by the way, agreeing the, on all the details. I mean. And the parents are basically forced to admit that they're the worst people on the whole planet. Yeah, and they're awesome. owning they're like yeah. almost the real villains of they the movie. Are. I could not they believe really how they, fucking they, awful these mothers. Yeah, are. they have more to gain by lying about it and saying like, "Oh, he's my son's not telling the truth." <laughs> right. Yeah. I was open minded to to give the parents a chance at first, starting the documentary, but like the longer it went on, just how could you, just let all this happen and be there and just let it happen money money i see that a lot of them were just like kind of at a midlife crisis dissatisfied with their life and they saw their an opportunity for a adventure of their boring mundane life and both of them kept calling it's a it's a like a fairy tale yeah it's like a fairy tale prince charming came they were they were my feet they were perfectly susceptible to his charms you know and he knew that. He, he absolutely knew that. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, the kids, that, that guy who sued him, um, <coughs> or no, he, so Chandler wasn't in the, in the documentary, no. right? It was the one guy that sued him that it was dismissed. Wade. Wade. So, peop- so Oprah asked him, well, why did you sue him? You know, like, like what, how, isn't, it, isn't that proof that it's about money? And he says, well, it's the only way I could get them to listen to me. Um, I felt like there was this great injustice. I wasn't thinking about money. I wanted to put it in front of a court, and I wanted people to have to listen to me and to what happened to me and what I have to say. Also, using the same platform that he used before to defend Michael. So powerful. This point. guy went on trial twice defending Michael mm-hmm. when he was brainwashed, <laughs> and he didn't understand the whole picture. He didn't understand he's been abused. Mm. And he was the super fan of Michael, and he couldn't imagine Michael going to prison. He was like, I gotta save him. Mm. I mean, you gotta hear him explain it. Obviously, I'm not doing it justice, mm. but... No, you're doing good. To him, once he had this breakdown and understanding of what happened to him, and he wanted to he wanted to correct the record, it kind of makes sense that he would want to do it again in front of court 
and have the word here too, so that he's not. He doesn't have to live with that guilt, and yeah. that shame. He wants to redo it. That that actually that point was struck a chord to me because it's so it makes so much sense. I want to get back on the stand and tell the truth this time. I just keep seeing people always saying it just seems so. Um, so, you know, like they can't trust him because he changed his story, basically. Mm-hmm. They just can't find him trustworthy. Mm-hmm. But it's just, you got to understand child abuse. Well, that's why to those people I always say, you should watch the documentary because that's pretty much the main thrust of it is explaining how that's possible. Yeah. Um, and if they were, if it was just one person, you know. I'd maybe be a little bit more sympathetic to that attitude that, you know, maybe they're just trying, this is a scam or whatever. But, I mean, these allegations have been around forever. Um, yes, it was, <laughs> he was never put in jail for it. But eventually, you know, when th- I think it's five people have come out mm-hmm. saying yes. that this happened to them. I think yeah. there's five in total. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, when there's that much smoke, there's usually fire. Especially when there's tons of footage of the guy being a creep with children. Like well, just watch. the the volume doesn't even matter. You just just I mean, come on, we're lo- we're looking at just use your brain. But also with the way the response they're getting from the whole world, discouraging. It's really discouraging other people Absolutely. to come out. How? So that that's sure. why I kind of entered the fray to begin with is because I had made a tweet saying that you know I Michael Jackson is a child predator and I want I I didn't see anyone voicing support for these victims that I saw as dudes whose life was and family was torn apart by this heinous crime and now hated by the world and I was like I was expecting to see more support for them and I just I felt so awful I felt like I wanted to voice public support for for the film and for these guys and that's why I entered the fray on social media um now, also something, there's a, another misconception. The guy who sued Michael Jackson, the case was thrown out. People show that as evidence that Michael Jackson is innocent. innocent. The truth is that the case was thrown out not on its merits, but on the statute of limitation. It was a, it was a technicality. The court said, Michael Jackson's mm-hmm. passed on. We can't hold his estate, his business, liable yeah. for this crime. And so they threw it out on, on technicality, making no... A judgment on of, of the merits of his claims, okay? Because it's like if you're saying child abuse happened at a school, <coughs> you, you're gonna sue the school, right? Or like yes, it yeah, doesn't well, it's work his like that. He's not it's, part of it. The anymore. company is not. Yeah, it's so, like Walt Disney uh, abused me, so I'm suing Disney. It's yeah. Like, well, he's a, he's it's a different you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> and the first trial. Yeah, guys, you have to remember that settling is not, doesn't mean you're, okay, and we've talked about it enough. Um, the other big one that you see constantly posted is a, the thing about the FBI, right? Yes. How he was investigated for 10 years. Yes. Like, that's the go-to that I keep seeing over and over and over again, which, you know, on yeah, its surface let, let sounds compelling. The, let me pull up the... Uh, Sign. No, but but go on then, because you know you've yeah, done yeah, a I lot mean, of research this week. Yeah, so I mean, with a lot of these claims, you know, you you see, there's all these memes that get reposted over and over again that have like kind of bullet points of like this is why it's bullshit, this is why these guys are incredible, <laughs> and on its surface, it's like oh wow yeah, I mean that sounds that sounds fishy, um, but almost every single one of them, if you dig into it, it's like so weirdly deceptive what they're saying. And yeah, the the go to is well, he was investigated by the FBI for <coughs> ten years uh, thoroughly, and they never found anything, not a single thing. Which, like, first of all, they were only the FBI was only involved insofar as providing technical support to local law enforcement. So we're not talking about like tapping his phone lines, twenty four hour monitoring by the FBI kind of thing. We're talking about local law enforcement sending magazines and tapes to the FBI for analysis. You know what I mean? Like, and this wasn't happening continuously. This was happening once in the early 90s with the first suit and again in the mid-2000s for the second suit. So it's over the course of 10 years, but that's very different than 10 years continuously. You know what I mean? Like, it's two instances of being looked into. 
And so that's not really, you know, that's not really being fully honest by saying he was being monitored by the FBI. <laughs> For 10 years. Yeah. So this is like the copy pasta that you see all over social media. First of all, I was uh, honored to be a, a guest on Tim's Office Hours podcast, and he made the most hilarious observation about this, which is so true. I wish I thought of it. <laughs> Grandpa Simpson is the raving delusional lunatic of the show. <laughs> he, so why true. is he the one holding <laughs> the sign? The I don't understand. He's the conspiracy theorist. There's even that theorist. similar Lisa Simpson meme. You could have used that at least. Lisa is it's more reputable. So Grandpa's hilarious. Nuts. It's almost like this was used ironically. Yeah, it's yeah. almost but, a troll. But they use it actually. Yeah. That's a very funny point. And the funny thing is that these guys are saying, oh, we did our research. Ethan didn't, uh, not e but you didn't, whenever someone speaks, they watch the, do you didn't do your research. All you did was watch a documentary and now you're an expert. But these people are just sharing a meme of Fuck Grandpa Simpson, who's the, who's the crazy delusional <laughs> character in the show, holding up a sign. It says, Michael Jackson was monitored by the FBI for 13 years. 13, His house was searched two times by more than 70 officers. Not true. I mean, t highly exaggerated. It wasn't monitored for 13 years. That, that's flat out false. Hundreds of kids were interviewed. Some were offered money. I don't know what that that's what a very that vague claim. I, I yep. don't I didn't I tried to investigate that. I tried to investigate every single thing on this, and some of it is so outlandish, I'm like, I don't even know how to find out about this. So nothing was found. I mean, that's just flat out um Yeah, I mean some false. very <laughs> some suspect stuff was definitely found. Well enough, as you and, said, to bring it to criminal court. And again, right, yeah. I mean they did prosecute him. It's not like there was no evidence. Again, it's not like the justice justice system is perfect. Like, right. since when are we all? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, and and, and it's, <laughs> it's not. Just, when are we all be, trusting? We them? don't. We don't convict. We convict people when it's beyond a reasonable doubt. Okay, so it's entirely possible that you can be guilty, but you can't convince a jury beyond a reasonable mm -hmm. doubt. And so, especially when the works. person is a super loved. <laughs> Hero for everyone, even and the jury. How do you even find a jury that doesn't know yeah. Michael Jackson? And all of his alleged victims are testifying in his favor. Yes. Okay. So nothing was found. That's false. He was tried for four months and found not guilty. That's true, but it doesn't mean he's innocent. He was found exactly not. Couldn't even get him on a misdemeanor. Well, he wasn't tried for a misdemeanor, you idiots. You don't even know how the law works. <laughs> like, that's such a weird point. It's not like, whoa, he's not guilty of abuse. Let's try him for uh, petty theft. Let's get him for jaywalking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the reason why we defend him is not because we are fans. Okay. Sure. We are fans <laughs> because we have studied the deposition, testimonies, and court documents instead of tabloid headlines. I'm sure that everybody sharing this uh, Grandpa Simpson meme has studied the testimonies, depositions, and court documents. First accuser was caught on tape saying he wants money. That was the dad, actually. Right? Uh, yeah. And, I mean, we... The other day, we listened to the tape of the dad. And, um, you know, it. you could easily interpret it as being somebody that's greedy and after money. But if you listen to it, you can very much equally interpret it as a furious parent who yeah. wants to destroy <laughs> the person that did this to their kid. You really... it, it It's all in... You know, but be, how you however interpret you it. interpret it, this is a flat-out lie. First accuser was caught on tape saying he wants money. False. It was his father, not the accuser. Right. The boy emancipated himself from his family, never spoke to them again. That's true. But imagine when if your parents sell you into a child abuse, you would want to do that as well. Second case was filed with timeline, contradiction, and gaps. Okay, Sherlock Holmes. They had... Scammed other celebs like Jay Leno. I don't know what that means. I, I tried to find that. I, I, I'm, I'm lost on that. If anybody wants to send info on that, I'm happy to look at it. But that, that was a weird one. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Wade Robinson and James Safechuck are proven liars who sued Michael Jackson estate for money. But when their case were thrown out of court, they decided to make a movie. Know your facts, fam. Okay, Got him. So, so Wade Robinson was the dancer. He was suing Michael Jackson, as we discussed, because he wanted to go back on the stand and correct the record. James Safechuck um, <coughs> was a child actor. He had a relationship with Michael Jackson for a long time. As far as I could tell, um, never sued Jackson, never sought money, never sought any monetary uh, damages or compensation. In fact, he burned hundreds of thousands of dollars of Michael Jackson memorabilia that was given to him and his family. Well, to, to be fair, he did 
uh, at a late stage in the lawsuit join Wade. That's what I, so, so that's what Wade I'm, sued. Michael that's what Jackson. I'm getting to. Right, is right, that okay. so? Wade Robinson was suing him, and I think when they met um, in collaboration for this. What happened is that James uh, was living in still in denial, you know, of not knowing what happened, but he was going through a mental breakdown. Mm-hmm. And he saw Wade Robson mm. talk about it on TV, and that kind of triggered him mm. to come to terms with mm. what happened. And right, and so they just they added him to the lawsuit as a they just they party. just they just added him mm-hmm. basically mm-hmm. to to uh, uh, so yeah. So they they uh, they say their cases were thrown out. It wasn't thrown out on the merits again. It was a technicality past the statute of limitation, and they were not compensated by HBO. In any way, shape, or form, to be in the documentary. To be in the documentary. So know your facts, fam. And again, please recall when you see this on social media that Grandpa Simpson, the raving lunatic, delusional conspiracy theory, who has lost his marbles, is the one holding the sign. I just <laughs> I don't understand this whole movement of like, oh, you're just gonna believe a documentary. It's like. Sorry, but What's wrong with I documentaries? really trust HBO. I love it, everything they make. Good. Well, HBO and is they, extremely credible. They have to go through so many lawyers. Absolutely. So many approvals. Oh my God! They, they they're putting the whole company on the line. You yeah. know, they say I always hear people out. saying it's unvetted, unproven. Uh, yeah, right. If HBO anything, this meme inherited. is unvetted yeah, and unproven. This- I don't know who created it and what <laughs> they know. <laughs> HBO but has Boston a huge legal team. Also, they it's have like, huge hoops, hurdles. To jump through to look, get cleared. I can look into stuff, and I did, and nothing changed my mind. But I'm also not going to pretend to be a person qualified to look at FBI reports and like <laughs> analyze uh, lawyer stuff. Like, sorry, I'm just not qualified. Well, when and- when the doc when I go to see a doctor and he tells me something, I trust him you know i believe what he's saying you're only he's hearing one side Elo, from that doctor <laughs> well and what's wrong with the documentary i mean a documentary is a source of information as much as a book a movie a magazine i mean it's a it's a it's a collection of knowledge it's anecdotes it's stories a documentary is and a is a is a movie made for the purpose of spreading knowledge and this one happens to be a good one it's the first-hand account you can watch of people that were in the room with them. Sometimes there are bad documentaries, and sure. you can tell. Yeah. And, you know, I have some intuition that I can trust. And, HBO and is not a network that puts out uh, sl- uh, tabloids. Let's put, let's put it I that way. I just don't understand this. It's like a movement now where oh, y- you just believe what, you, what people tell you. It's like, or, well, no, it's, it's a movement of like, uh, oh, oh, that's cute. You actually believe that? Yeah. I don't know. Well, again, I mean, I think it all comes down to this sort of smearing of the of the subjects of the documentary and, and questioning of their credibility, which, again, I mean, I won't go point by point through it right now because it's really arduous. But, you know, if all those people that are saying, oh, do some research, I encourage them, you need to do some research. Actually follow up on <laughs> these statements that you're seeing uh, that are trying to counter the narrative because o- almost – Every single one of them um, are are highly deceptive in the are, way that they're yeah. worded, and, and and a lot of the facts are so much in dispute, so much that nobody has. Like, there's one claim that I always hear, and f- that supports my claim that Michael Michael was a uh, a child abuser. By the way, before I get too deep in that, can one of you guys find out what was originally on the sign? I'm really curious. <laughs> I feel like that could be really, really original uh, yeah. Simpsons episode. I actually, I vaguely remember. <coughs> I want to find image. the original picture. Yeah, but what I was fine. saying is that there's one claim that uh, the child, that the F or the police took pictures of Michael's penis, and that the child was uh, correctly able to identify a marking on his penis. Now we were not able in any way to corroborate or. There's a lot of claims like that that it's just how you can't possibly know if it's right or wrong. So I'm not I'm not bringing that up. That's mm-hmm. not an undisputed fact. But there's enough. Yeah. I think to draw a cl- very very clear picture. Um, I'd love to see what was originally written on that sign that somebody said. You know, I'm gonna erase whatever Grandpa Simpson has and write this, and people will accept that as fact. I really want to know what was there. Um, furthermore, don't take my word for it because I am an idiot. Okay. Um. And that is, my, <laughs> but that is my point. You, you don't need to have a PhD in I don't even know what they expect you to know yeah. to form an opinion on this. Yeah, I don't. I mean, that's how would you go on with your life? You can't. You can't do anything then if you have to question everything. Well, I always find it so rich when people. Uh, I built my whole career on sharing my opinion. 
I have a very strong opinion. And when people agree, they get very excited and they laugh and they love it and they feel like they're on the same team. But when they disagree, all of a sudden it's Ethan stick to comedy. <laughs> Ethan yeah. is always wrong. His opinions it's like it's like, dude, I Ethan needs to stop sharing his opinion and stick to comedy. Yeah. It's like I built my whole career on sharing my opinion. <laughs> yeah, then this is tough. this is what I do. <laughs> this is what I do. You know? But so don't take my word for it, okay? For all of the s- discrediting you see on social media among uh, Michael Jackson fans, this movie received 97% on Rotten Tomatoes, and among top critics, it has 100%. Now, I'm not saying that to say, to say that critics are correct about everything. I'm only merely exemplifying that every movie critic... 97% and 100 of top critics watch this. Their whole livelihood mm-hmm. is criti- uh, is uh, judging the merits of a film. And they all said there's something credible and compelling about this film that it's worth watching. Yeah. 100% of them said that. So these are people whose whole livelihood is judging films. And they are in unanimous decision that there's something compelling, worth watching in these documentaries. And Louis Thoreau recently, again, thank God, because sometimes I feel like I'm living in crazy world here. Louis Thoreau, one of the most brilliant, prolific, credible documentarians of all time. Love, love I mean, everything he, he makes. He is truly one of my heroes. Now, you can say I'm stupid and that I don't do research and that Ethan said watch the documentary over all the evidence. Try saying that to Louis Thoreau. If you can't see that Michael Jackson was a pedophile after watching Dan Reed's documentary, you are willfully blind. And if you are campaigning against it, you are actively colluding in the silencing of victims. What a brilliant tweet. And, of course, if you go down to the comments, the top shit is like, um... This ain't it, fam. (laughs) Yeah. I haven't seen the documentary yet. But FBI conducted thir- 13 years of investigation. Oh, shocking. Wow, I wonder where you got that information. You must have researched <laughs> it yourself. Every time I see it, I cringe. It's like, come on, people. Like, just don't, Our, don't My favorite that. comment and response was, uh, um, I usually agree with you, Louie, but on this mm. one, it's like, okay. I, the, the second part, what he said about silencing victims is just so true. It's so important. And, and that's just what's so painful for me to watch with the way people are just talking shit about this two guys and in general uh, the victims it's uh, yeah so they change their story because they're a victim i mean you maybe you haven't been through any experience like that but this is something that is very common with child abuse <coughs> well and their main point that they're clinging to is completely dismantled in the documentary they refuse to watch yeah um, that was kind of what was so heartbreaking and so frustrating about this is like the, if you're willing to go out in public and, um, attack and ridicule and discredit people, because on the other end, what you are defending is potentially one of the most prolific child predators and um, that that ever lived yeah that has done some of the most so, horrific so if if you're willing to go in public and defend potentially one of the someone who's committed the ha- most heinous crime you can imagine one of the most heinous crimes you can imagine i think you owe it to yourself to do as much research as you can and that unfortunately i hate to tell you includes watching this documentary um that has 100 percent on rotten tomatoes and is widely uh, acclaimed by documentarians. Um, but it's so true. You are campaign. You are campaigning against. You are actively colluding and silencing victims. It's so true. Imagine yeah. you're one of his victims watching this, and but you're already. How would grappling. you ever come out yeah. when this is the response? It's like, yeah, you I would s- never. Yeah. Why? And so you're already going through so much shit. You don't need the whole world shitting on you too. Yeah. Of course, Louis Thoreau puts it so brilliantly, and I'm just such a huge fan of his. Um, were you guys able to find the original meme? Um, I haven't been able to find it yet. The chat has been somewhat helpful. I think they've maybe pointed me in the right direction of the right episode. Yeah. 
So uh, okay, good. The search continues. I'm, clo- I'm closing in. Good. Thank you, chat. Appreciate you guys. Um. So that's kind of, my, and and then I see this too, which I mean, it's, I hear I see people saying this. Been two hours already. They say to me, "Oh damn." They go, "Well, I believe that Michael Jackson did the crimes he's accused of, but because he's dead and can't defend himself, it's wrong to drag him." Yeah, and that. Um. What? Are, that, that that statement to me is profoundly dumb. <laughs> it's because you're on one hand saying yes, he is uh, committing the most heinous crimes that he never lived the ju- he never got taken to justice for destroying mm-hmm. so many family and so many kids. He never got the justice he deserved. And I f- and I, and and so on one hand you're like he is a a heinous criminal. But on the other hand, he can't defend himself, so let's not talk about it. How do those two ideas uh, coexist? How? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even know what to say about yeah, it. But, so stupid. if he was a huge, awful child rapist, we don't deserve to know? Let's not talk about it. I well, would like to know. It's so important because one... A lot of people say, well, he's dead. What does it matter? Okay, their survivors of his crimes are very much alive. Their pain is very much alive. The, their families that were ripped apart is very much alive. And two, if we as a world enabled Michael Jackson to commit such heinous crimes, if we were collectively groomed and cast under his spell, that is something that we as a world need to grapple with and understand and make sure that we don't enable people to do it again. Mm.